with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with the heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee oh Lord come on with my hands lifted up with my hands lifted The heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord, with my hands lifted up, oh, and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of your name Jesus we give your name praise we give you the glory and honor all glory and honor be unto you oh God oh as we enter into your presence oh God we offer our praise up to you Lord 
for you alone are worthy, you're worthy. You alone are worthy, you're worthy. We sing a song to you, Lord. We make a melody unto our great God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our King of kings, our Lord of lords, our great and mighty God, our great and awesome God, you're worthy of all praise, all glory and honor. Be unto you, oh God. Oh, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. We sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. And greatly to be praised. We sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, everybody, sing that. We sing praises. Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior God. Come on, tell him how great he is. How great.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's just take a praise break right here. God's been great. He is great. He is good. And he's good all of the time. And all of the time he's good. Oh, bless ye the Lord. Bless ye the Lord. Bless ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Our great God, our great God, our great God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. For just being our God today. Just being our redeemer. The love of our souls today. Father, you loved us so much that you gave your son. Your son called Jesus. And Jesus gave his life. And through his life, the blood that now redeemed us caused us to be adopted into the family of the most holy God. Even from the very foundation of the world, you had us chosen in him. God, we give you praise. Even when we wasn't worthy of it. Your word said, while men was yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you for even giving me a mind and a will to acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and Savior. It's in your word, except you draw us, Father, to the Son. We cannot come on our own. When there was a urging and a urging and a pushing and a moving of your mercy in us, I felt it. I heard the living word that caused me to give my life to Jesus. Even now, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice, knowing that they out of the art, out of the safety net, out of the relationship with Jesus, your word just tells us to repent. Come to him, and he will in no wise cast us away. That's who you are, our most high God. God, you above everything and anything. And as we as your people gather, it is our voice in the earth that you are here and you call us. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. You will hear from heaven. Uh, you will forgive our sins and heal our land. We stand first of all in proxy for our government, the United States of America. The world is included, but you put us within the boundaries of what they call USA. We pray even for the president, because it is you who sets up kings. It is you who takes them down. It is you who changes times and seasons. And you told us, the believers, to pray for all of those that are in authority. That we may live a peaceful and a godly life. Stretch forth your hand. For we decree and declare that you are Lord. 
We know that you are a deliverer, you are a healer, you are a restorer, you are the wisdom of the earth realm. And God, I pray that you stretch forth your hand, let your glory even go to the hospital. Uh, let your glory fill the room where the president of the United States dwells. Give wisdom to the doctors, but as he lieth down, you speak to his ear and his ear and speak to his heart. It is you who have given him the authority in the earth. God, you know how to turn hearts of a king. Only you can do it. Go into the House of Representatives, the Senate, the Supreme Court. Ah, Jesus, you are Lord and be Lord. We pray, Lord of the harvest, send forth labors among them. Let our ears hear that, God, there is a spirit of revival. Men, women, boys and girls are turning their hearts towards you. The city, the country that know their God. They shall be strong and do exploits. God, I thank you. We plead your blood today. Not only on our lives and on our family, but we plead your blood over the United States of America. Let your blood speak and let your blood prevail. God, I thank you for the many-membered body of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are strengthening us one by one and name by name. Oh, God, you are saving in households. You are delivering. You are set free. God, I thank you because we know that you are a prayer answering God. In fact, your word said, my eyes are upon the righteous and my ears stay attuned to their cry. You told us to call upon you in the day of trouble and you will deliver. God, we ask you in Jesus' name, help us, help us, help us, help us. Spirit of the living God, blow afresh on us. Heal, 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 heal our wills, heal our wills. Don't let us be distracted. Don't let us be taken off a of course, but heal our wills and heal our minds. Oh God, our thoughts, heal us. Oh God, but most of all, we as your many-membered body, help us not to forget the purpose of, where we are born again. Help us not to get the purpose, get the purpose where you have called us into the kingdom. Our purpose is to reach and save those that are lost, that we'll be part of adding to your kingdom, that you use us, that your kingdom will come on the earth, and that your will will be done. Oh God, I thank you. That you're reviving us. You are turning us back to our first love. Help us. Uh, help us to love you with all of our hearts. Help us to love you with all of our soul. With all of our mind. And with all of our strength. God, we as a body, we lift up pastors. Ah, they are in your hands. We are in your hands. Give us your shepherd's heart that we may feed your flock. But most of all, make us an example in righteousness, in holiness. I pray and I give you thanks that you're taking sickness out of our midst. Sickness of the body, sickness of the mind, of the will. Oh, God, you are healing us. The God that healeth us. 
Once again, we shall see and our ears shall behold the miraculous things that you are now doing among your people. Signs and wonders. Ah, no matter what it looks like, signs and wonders. You are a God that can step in chaotic situation. All you need is just your word. Your word that you sent to heal us and to deliver us from all destruction. God, I thank you. I decree, I declare in this place and every ear that hears my voice rise up and be healed today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the weak, let the weak, let the weak say I'm strong in you. Oh God, I thank you. Cause us to put on the full armor of God that we may be able to stand in this evil day. And having all done to stand, we will remain standing. Stand, stand, stand. Stand, stand. People of God, stand, stand, stand. Ah, fix your eyes on him. Look up into the hills from which cometh your help. Your help, our help cometh from the Lord, the same God that created heaven and earth, created the universe, the all-powerful God that set the sun and the moon in the sky and in space, and they remain their position. The same God that created millions of stars and they remain in their position. The same God that put planets around the solar system and yet they remain in their position. You uphold it the world with your word and your power. And there is nothing too hard, nothing, nothing concerning our lives, nothing in our lives, nothing Nothing in our lives that's impossible for you to work. Your hand is not too short where it cannot reach. Neither is your ear heavy that it does not hear us. Ah, I speak to the north, the south, the east, and the west. On the behalf of your righteousness, I decree and declare and command doors open. Let this fall season that represent harvest, I call it in into those that has been faithful in the things of the kingdom. I call it in. Harvest time, harvest time, harvest time. Everything that we have planted in your kingdom, harvest time, harvest time. Not one prayer, not one sacrifice, not one seed will miss the time, this time, of bringing forth. So God, today I praise you. That you are strengthening us one by one, name by name. Lay your hand, uh, I say, lay your hand on us today. Lay your hand, uh, I say, Spirit of the living God. Mm. The hand of the Lord come through the Holy Spirit. Lay your hand, envelop us today. Lay your hand on us. I pour out the issue from the top of our heads to the very soul of our feet. We not only just want to know you are ever present, but God, we want to feel your presence. We want to smell the aroma of your presence. Ah, 
thank you today for the use, for the use of your name. Mm. Ah, your name that's above every name. Your name where all power has been given. Your name that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. Even if they didn't know it, they're going to bow and they're going to confess that you're Lord. But this day, our soul bows. Our bodies bow. To the most high God, to the living God, to the creator, to the potter of our lives, to the one that is, was, and is to come, to the God of might, to the almighty God, to the Lord of lords and to the king of kings, to the Lord of hosts, to the mighty warrior. We bow today to the great and awesome God. Ah, the God of heaven and earth, the sovereign ruler, who we can call Emmanuel, our faithful and true God, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the wonderful counselor, the peace that touched him. Ah, your name. We take refuge in your name. We take shelter in your name. We receive strength in your name. The Prince of Peace, the Bishop of our souls, the Lord that sanctifies, the King of glory, our Abbot Father, I Abba Mane yo are eternal God. Mane yo so ancient of days. Ah, ye bokusha. Manana yo sha. The author and the finisher of our faith. They call you the bomb of Gilead. Our blessed hope. Our advocate, your motion. Wherever they need you today, become your name. Our shield and buckler. Ah, our keeper. The lifter of our heads. Our song in the night. Our shade, you moko in the heat. I love God today. Ah, the God that heals. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Hey, the light of the world. The light that shines in darkness. My say koshe. Mm, we receive the breath of the living God. Mm. Ah, yeah, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy. You are worthy. Ah, you are worthy. Worthy, worthy. worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of our praise. Ah, you're worthy. 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 I am a crochet. You're worthy. Oh, bless ye the Lord, all ye. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Oh, we worship you in the sanctuary. 
We worship you in the sanctuary. In our homes, we worship you. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. All of the power belong to you. All of the power is in your hand today. Oh, bless you the Lord. 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 Tell your soul to bless you the Lord. Bless you the Lord, oh my soul. And all that's within us. All that's within us. All that's within us. All that's within us. There's healing in this room. You need to open up your mouth and open up your hand and receive healing. Oh! Aye, kashe you today. We bless you today. Hallelujah. We bless you today. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord today. Just tell yourself as you take your seat, he's a good God. Ah, I love him today, church. I love him today. I love Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, my soul, my soul, my soul. My soul make her boast in him today. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we get ready to go into the word of the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. There is a name I love to hear. I love to see. Sing its worth. Its sound. Like music in my ear It's the sweetest Sweetest name I know There is a name Then I
Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Love Jesus. your hands together. Ah, I love him, church. Woo! Well, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, I had two people was saying the same word to me, and I kept hearing to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. It's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit has he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is a gift of God. I know that whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taketh from it. God does it. That man may fear him. That which has been is now. And that which is to be has already been. And God requires that which is past. Well, today I'm going to just share with you uh, this one word that was given to us. And, and our theme will be is um, stay in the process. All of these times and season is a working of a process that God is and must work through us. You find out here that everything got its own time. Everything that I've read to you has its own time. And everything that I've read with you uh, has been in the past, we experiencing it now in the present, and it's going to be in the future. No two things can happen at the same time. No two things. He said there's a time to be born and a time to die. No two things 
can happen at the same time. And everything that happened, every time and every season thing that happened, it always has a cause and it has an effect on where God's taking us. Nothing's come going on that do not have a purpose and a cause to it. We see in this list of things all of these cycles. And these list of things cannot be avoided. They all are part of his will and purpose for us. These list of things, what really, when you go through all of these list of things, you'll find out that not all of these times are good and they're not all happy and they're not all positive times in our lives. Some, when you look at it, it, uh, it makes us sad, makes us cry. They are hardship. They are testing. They are trials of our lives, but they are part of the process. But what is so unique about all of these processes that we from time to time will enter into, it says these words. I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. So in other words, God's got his eye on every cycle. And God is involved in every cycle of time that we endure. It says that I've seen the pain. He's already known of the pain that some of these times and seasons are going to bring. But God said they're in my perspective. When you look at God, you mean tell me, yes, I, I, I did that uh, because I want you to be exercised in it. You mean to me I can be exercised in doing death and I can be exercised in all of these times? Yes, I'm building spiritual muscles called faith. When you deal, and I looked at the word process, and the process is a series of events or action that always produce some kind of result. A process is something that is ongoing. A process is always something that will advance you and move you forward. Now, I know some of these cycles look like you've fallen backwards and fallen out. But in this process, God, even though we don't even know it, he even told us some things are hidden from us only known by God. And when we think that we are not going forward or moving in all of the things that we are encounter, yes, we are because process is always advancing you and moving forward. A process is a systematic plan that makes sense of information or reflect. It's a systematic plan. Of action. Well, we already know that the Lord told us that I know the plans that I have towards you. A system, and the plans that I have, they are good and will not give you harm, and they will give you a future and a hope. A systematic plan. When you are in the process, you are in it, you are doing the course of it, you may be in the middle or the midst of it. When you are in the midst of one of these time zones, all of us can identify in it right now. When you are in the midst of something, that means you are surrounded by it. You are among it, you are in the thick of it. Processes, people of God, are important. They describe how things are done, and they also provide how things can get better. It don't seem like it. 
Everything that we do has a process to it. When you got up this morning, your process was you're going to go to the bathroom and brush your teeth and take a shower. And, and you had to go through some processes when you got here. Else you wouldn't be looking like you're looking. Uh, you got to go through some process when you go on your job. There's a process. When we go home and cook, there's a process. Even if you go by drive through it's a process because you got to drive through and put your order in and pay your money. That's a process. So everything about our lives is a process. And when we know that there's other words that we use, uh, we use sometimes take a procedure or a method or system or steps. Or there's techniques to it. There's measures. There, there's course of action. We got a game plan. We got rules. We got operation. We got, we got exercise. We got stages of development. Those are all still part of a process. You being saved today was a process. Uh, I want you to just take a moment and take a quick look back and, and, and look back and see the process that it took God to bring you up to the day. Some of us was willingly and some of us wasn't so willingly, but he fixed the process. Had a time zone, a process that we will go through to get to him. Some of us got saved because we just went to church. Our mom and dad took us, and we were in church, so we grew up in church. But some of us, we didn't like church, wasn't thinking about church, having our own time. But God sent a time zone over here in Ephesians 3, and some of us was pushed in the process. Some of us was drug in the process, but thanks be to God, however we got to him, it's all right. I took up something about this man named Paul. There's all kinds of times. We don't want to miss it. There's times of favor. There's days of salvation. There's times, out times, and, and Psalms 31, 15 says, out times are in his hand. Hosea 10, 12 say, it's, it's comes a time we need to seek the Lord. And then Acts 3, 19 says, there's times of refreshing and there's also times of visitation. Paul, I want to use for an example, uh, Paul, so we won't cry the blues. We'll shake ourselves and ask God to help us. Uh, the apostle Paul, he said, I was made an apostle, not from a council of men, or not even a man appointed me to be an apostle, but God raised me up to be an apostle. And in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to the 31st verse, let me tell you some of the, the, the process he went to. He said, I I'm talking to the servants of Christ. And he said, and I am more of a one. And he began to tell uh, the people, he said, I serve him far more. I serve him far more any, in spite of the process that he took me through. Paul said, I serve him more in spite of the process that I had to go through. Here's some of the process. He said, I was put in prison more often. I was whipped times I couldn't even count it. I faced death again and again five times Times 39, I was beaten with lashes. Three times, I was beaten with rods. I was once stoned. Three times shipwrecked. I spent the whole night and day drifting at sea. I traveled long journey and I faced danger from the rivers and robbers. I was dead, had danger even among my own people as well as the Gentiles. I faced danger in the city. I faced danger in the desert. I faced danger on the sea. I had sleepless nights. I was hungry and thirsty. So many times I went without food. I had to shiver in the cold because I didn't have enough clothing to keep me warm. Beside all of this, I had the burden of all the church. But if I must boast, 
to show how weak I am, then I realize that God of our Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of all of my praise to whatever process that he had me in. Then I went on over to 2 Corinthians 12 and starting at the uh, seventh verse, it says that, and in the midst of all, because I kept serving, he kept giving me revelation after revelation. And and I be, and sometimes I got so caught up with him that I had out-of-body experience. I, I didn't even know where I was because I was so caught up in the glory. And then he even had another process. He put a thorn in my flesh. So I won't get headed and pride and the thorn that was in my flesh. Listen, it was no sickness. It was a messenger of Satan. And that's why I got into a whole lot of trouble because he buffered me. Everywhere I go, he had a plot. That I needed to remember that my strength is not in myself, but it's in the God that I serve. He said, I even begged God, like some of us, begging God to take some stuff away. We've been begging God to fix it. We've been even giving, giving him the method how to do it. And each time I begged God, he said, oh, my grace. Is all you need. It is my power that work best in your weakness. So then I, I, I changed my attitude in this process. I became glad. And I was, it was good that I boasted my, my weakness. How you make it? By the strength of God. What you going to do? God is my provider. How you going to take it? He's the strength of my life. How you going to come out of it? I can do all things through Christ. I'll boast in my weakness that I make the power. You know why you haven't experienced the power of Christ? It's because you've been boasting in your weakness. You haven't boasted. In what God can do and whatever he's working out in your life, it is all right. That's why, he said, that's why I take pleasure in my weakness. When I get insulted, I take pleasure in it. When I come up against hardship, I take pleasure in it. When I'm persecuted, I take pleasure. When I get into troubled times, I take pleasure because I'm suffering for Christ. So when I feel weak, that's when I'm really strong. That's why he can say, let the weak. God, I can't take this. Let the weak. I just don't want to let the weak say that I'm strong. He comes back again. And testify in 2 Corinthians 7, 4 through 10. He said, we have a treasure in our earthly vessels. It is the excellency of the power of God. Uh, you need to look at yourself this morning. It's Christ in us, in us. The hope of glory. Say we, we have a treasure, we, we have a power. We have power in us that we haven't even tapped in on because we are glorying in the wrong thing in the midst of our season. He said we're going to be pressed on every side, pressed with troubles, but we're not going to get crushed. We're going to be perplexed, but we're not going to be driven to despair. So if you're in despair, that means something has happened to you in the process. You are not contacting who you should. He said, we're going to get hunted down, but not abandoned by God. You're going to get knocked down, but not destroyed. Because the suffering in our body shares the death of Christ so that his life may be seen in us. Our process. It's for his glory. 
everything that we encounter. I think when we got over here uh, in the Lord, we thought we just everything just supposed to be zip, zam, bam. We, we thought we're not supposed to encounter. Uh, Sometimes uh, we, we think that where am I not believing because this is happening to me. You are believing. That's why it's happening to you. Where did I miss it? You didn't miss it. You in a season. God got you there. I want you to remember that wherever it is, God got you there. Whatever's going on in the home and in your life, God got you there. You need to just say, what is it that I'm supposed to learn that you can get to glory? What is it about my process? That you can get the glory. Well, you told us about Paul. Or what are you going to say about us? That's good, all right? I'm glad. Let's go to Romans. In Romans 8, uh, 31, it says here that what shall we say to these things? What shall we say to the process? If God be for us. Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Look at the 25th verse. It says, who is it? Now, I want to know during this process, who, what would separate you from the love of Christ? Make up your mind while you're going through a process. You're hurting, it's pain, and you're crying. You don't know who, what is it? That he's allowing to come. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Are you going to let tribulation? You're going to let distress separate you? You're going to throw in the towel because of persecution and famine? You're going to throw in the towel because of nakedness or danger or sword or friend's sharp tongue? Said it's written, for thou sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all these things, all of your season, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So you need to put on some strength and tell yourself like Paul did, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angel nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ. Oh! Ah, you got to get persuaded. You got to get a new attitude. Because he is the same God in Isaiah 43 that said, Oh, Jacob, I'm the one that formed you, O Israel. Church, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by your name. Say your name. Say your name. I've called you. Say your name. I've called you. I've called you by your name. You are mine. When, look at the process, when your pass is through the waters, I'm going to be with you. When you go through the rivers of life, they shall not overflow you. When you walk it through the fire, you shall not be burned. You won't even have the smell of smoke on you. You're not even going to look black. What you go through and what you been through. Because God's got you. Stay in the process. Stay in the process. I end in Psalm 66. The eighth verse says, Oh, bless our God, ye people. Oh, bless our God, ye people. Make the voice of 
of his praise be heard. He holdeth our soul in life. He suffer that our feet be not moved. We are being proved. He's trying us. The process as silver is tried. He brought us into the net. Won't let us get out of it. We can't squirm out of it. He even allowed afflictions to be laid upon our Lord. He causes me to ride over our head. He's going to allow us to walk through some fire. We're going to walk through some flood. But guess what? It was the process because the end of that process is to bring you into abundance. You want God to bless you? There's a process to his blessing. There's a process in his deliverance. There's a process in his salvation. There's a process in his healing. the process stay in the process stay with the process stay with the process stay in the process don't you give up don't you throw in the town don't you get weary my help church got you in the process, got me, got our household, got the church, got the United States of America in the process. Woo. And he said he'll make all things beautiful in his time. I don't know what I'm going to look like after I come out of this particular process. But I know God's got something in store that he calls beauty. Ah, I wish you can just see yourself ahead of yourself. I wish you can just look ahead by faith. I wish you just take a look ahead by faith. 
and say yes to the finished product. Ah, God, we thank you. Thank you for your spirit of comfort. The spirit of encouragement. The spirit of exhortation. The spirit of edification. Your prophetic anointing that rests upon us through this word. God, I give you praise for new strength for the journey. Ah, we are strong in you. And we're going to stay in our process. For we have said yes to your divine will. And yes to your divine way. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. If perchance there's someone that don't know Jesus. This is a good time to get to know him. If you're in your home and have not given the Lord your life, you need to welcome the Lord Jesus. So I'm going to accept you as my Savior today and as my Lord. That's all you need to do. Ask the Lord to forgive you. I, I, I need some help in my process. I've tried everything else. But Jesus, I want to take you and when I bring you, I bring you into my household. And my household is set up to receive the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and add no sorrow. Healing will come to your house when Jesus is there. Deliverance and salvation. Provision will come when Jesus steps in. So you, I pray this listening that you will say yes, and even in the midst of us, that you will say yes to the Lord's will and to the Lord's way. We don't have altar calls now. It's coming back, but why are you on your pews in your home? I don't have to see it, but this thing is between you and God. And I do know that when he does come in, you would realize a change and those around you would know that there's been a change. It's been good for those who are watching. Brings us to a time where we give that that belong to the Lord. Again, I got a phone call, one of the prophets of the Lord, seasoned prophet call, and said in this season, this is a season that God's really going to show himself strong in that, that what we have done with our stewardship. And I believe that. I, I, I believe that uh, we are fall season is because it comes. Why is there a fall? Because whatever's been planted in the spring comes up and you harvest it in the fall. And even if you've had a bad year, if you begin to align yourself, Isaac began to sow in the land of a famine and he reaped a hundredfold in that self same year he is the same God so as we give and I put the blessings of the Lord upon your giving God as we present our gifts our tithe our offering our teruma unto you that you have purpose in your kingdom you see, and it's you who know. It is you who keeps record of us. But I asked in Jesus' name, make your people a spectacle of your glory. Everybody around them will know that they are blessed. Cause heads to scratch because what is it about you that you seem to have overflow? It's because God has designed harvest time. Bless each hand that gives. Everyone that brings their offering and tithe to you. Bless them according to your word and what you have purpose. Cause their bonds to be filled and run over. We decree it so in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.